the focus of the work stream that I've been involved in is, is very much around giving care professionals access to the data they need. One of the most inefficient things we have is health and care professionals having to make imperfect decisions with partial information, having to create in their mind with fragments of the total picture a judgment as to about what to do next as far as, as treatment and care is concerned. But fundamentally there are five or six areas which, we, which the work stream that, that I have, have led on have um, identified as, as critical. The interoperability challenge was made. Digital maturity I said I was going to focus on and the local digital roadmaps. Clearly there has to be work done as well to align the levers and incentives around this agenda. And the last element from our perspective is developing digital capability. I'm going to focus on the digital maturity. The byline there is a, a baseline and benchmarking tool to assure progress and highlight best practice. Um, we don't universally know where we're starting from in this context. There is a real issue about the extent to which our system currently has got pockets of excellence, but not necessarily that excellence written, written enterprise-wide across provider organizations. In terms of care settings, they increasingly need to be fit for purpose in terms of using these digital technologies and these digital capabilities. What we sort of have at the moment is a handle on what people have bought this idea of installed capability. You know the tech that you've written, you've got the license for, you've got installed in your organization. Um, too often we know that that technology is championed by a small number of clinicians or professionals in some parts of the business and isn't actually being used enterprise-wide. Or people are making deliberate decisions about starting with a, a pocket of those who are interested, for example, in enabling clinical decision support, but are anxious about taking that conversation with the clinical leaders in their organization across the whole organization um, so fundamentally we want to prompt people to say it's not just having the stuff it's actually effectively using it we need to be able to give organizations an ability to measure where they're starting from because we simply cannot move at the pace we want to in relation to new models of care if information continues to be trapped in the silos in individual organizations so we're, we've been at the design stage in relation to this work for the last couple of months we've worked in partnership with um, UCLP and a number of other the academic health science networks and have road tested this resource out with, um, with the NHS and social care. Um, and my view would be that you'll be interested in it because you probably don't know ostensibly where you're starting from. That you should be really keen to understand and, how, and, and have some way to benchmark your progress on this agenda against that of your peers. You might want to make some decisions about resource prioritization because we will not be able to afford all of this stuff simultaneously. Um, and you'll want to align that with your planning ambitions. Um, we want to create and ensure that there's an ability for people to learn from others. We know somewhere in the country at the moment there are people actually and actively optimizing some of the resources that they've got and some of the capabilities that they've got. And there are other places which just haven't quite managed it. And again, this whole idea is to place this in a cycle of continuous improvement. It's about local organizations, local health and care economies understanding how they can thrive in this context. Why is this of interest from a perspective of, of, of the center or a national perspective? It's because you know, there are and will be priorities around funding going forward. There are and will be strategic priorities um, around investment and, and delivery. There's something about what can the technology do for you, and we've used this idea of digital capabilities and honed in on that. Um, we also recognize that there's something about the readiness in organizations and in health and care systems to make the full use and benefit of this. Um, so we're talking about organizations asking themselves some key questions around, are they best organized with their partners to maximize the benefit of this stuff? We've broken this down into a number of key capabilities. Uh, capabilities around record assessment and support plans, decision support, transfers of care orders and communications. It, can you do those effectively in your own organisation and can you, do you have the utility to share that information across your local health and care system? Um, are you making progress in terms of remote and assistive care? Are you ensuring that you're using some of the tools and resources that digital offers you to maximise the assets and resources in your organisation? GS1, barcodes, RFID, um, intelligent uh, scheduling, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and have you begun to find your way forward to actually, uh, in that organization, in that health care economy, release some of the potential that citizens have to be active in the management and delivery of their own care? That's the design stage. We're just about to complete that. 
Um, the assessment model will roll out over the next number of months. Uh, ostensibly, it's about giving people an opportunity, CTG's health and wellbeing boards, to conduct sensible conversations locally to get started. But ultimately, to say this is about producing back to the NHS something of relevance and meaningful to NHS and social care about where people are starting from on this progression towards being digitally mature. I hope that was useful and uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you.